afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another Propaganda Cast Addendum State of the Balance with me, a host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda and Master of Other Stuff. We're off here, of course, then discussion you know, what is the state of the balance here for May 2015, what sort of happened in the last month in terms of, for example, metagame. In terms of patch, of course, there's pretty much been bugger all, so not really much to discuss there. In terms of the meta again, you know, there's a rule, not been huge changes. I mean, the bigger change, perhaps, again, is the Wehrmacht, sort of a less reliance on mechanized assault. Slightly increasing close air support, well, there's a bit more variety there. But, so, you know, after the patch sort of slowed down a bit, and there's sort of, again, sort of a tendency towards heavier tier ones. In fact, there's a lot that goes for heavier tier ones at the moment. Even when it not, doesn't necessarily make sense, and rather, in several cases, ends up actually losing a lot of momentum and sort of a lot of opportunities there. So, I do feel like it's a bit of an odd thing, but still, it's one thing that's happening on that's certainly something I think some player, clever players can actually try and take advantage of if they know what they're doing. So, that's a little suggestion there, maybe for the Allied players. In terms of doctrine, again, it's a bit here and there. We are seeing more medium armor, more non doctrine armor, though, from the Wehrmacht. But that's about it, really. Though there's still a bunch of relying on mechanized assault, for example, for a crutch, or to a certain extent, close air support, and as as another crutch, essentially. MD42 to play those still see some usage. So I mean, there are some things going on. There's some variation, but overall, it's not, for example, like say, you know, some large branches on schools of thought at the moment. Soviets are still basically stuck in a rut. I mean, there's some go for maybe a quick one tank or something. Though I am seeing an increase in sort of people calling in heavy armor and supporting it with SUD5s so actually using cartouches. I mean, there are some slight increases there as well. It's not just all the same, but there's still a heavy just basically reliance on calling Soviet shock rifle or guards motor. Some bit variation here and there though. There is some slight, but again it's mainly there and it's mainly because they can get away with it. I mean by the time for example a Wehrmacht plane most cases get out of Panzer IV for example there's not too long after a T-3045 group out or an IS-2 so you know that rather than that sense you know doesn't really incentivize the so to perhaps try out something else when they can reasonably easily get now an IS-2. For the Americans Again, things generally tend to sort of shift in what they do, sort of huge blocks, and they stay for a while, then it changes again. Currently, rifle companies very much popular with EC8, but again, you know, it might soon change to airborne or something else. Again, it varies a bit, it varies a bit. And again, sort of terms seem to be the Americans at the moment just sort of moving blocks. You know, either it's going for the captain a lot, it's going for the lieutenant a lot. There's been sort of less M20s at the moment, though it does seem to make a slight sort of comeback. But beyond that, there's not really s much else there to sort of really comment on at the moment. It's not like, you know, a, um, again, wildly shifting field, not compared to, say, Wehrmacht, which has some, and also even, well, not the sides. Over Commander West has seen some slight change away from just relying on false coast band. We are seeing some slight variations on things. Breakthrough, seeing more usage. We're seeing less fortification, less just Luft of the ground forces, some scavengers as well. Elite armor is still about as elite as a paper bag that's wet. That is not at all, and it's not really seeing much usage at all either, so not much there either. I mean, that sort of really overall actually covers sort of the meta game here. And again, there's probably all sorts of small variations that might sort of be missing up, but sort of in the larger moves there, uh, not so much. I mean, really, again, looking at something through the call-ins again, the idea might just basically be, again, to further shift the way up the command points. See, again, it's basically down to timing again. By the time most folks don't get out a medium tank, the other side, if he just sort of hangs on, he can easily get out a heavy tank, and more or less at the same resource expense. Yes, the first T-34 folks don't feel that. First Tiger, first Panda 4 out. More or less the same cost for an IS-2, and if you try to go for a Panther in some cases, then that's one and a half IS-2. I mean, of course, Again, some player stuff sort of figuring out again, sort of trying to go for more aggressive tactics, which then forces the allies then to react, or vice versa, again, for making sure they can't easily go for it without suffering a lot. So, I mean, there are some things happening here, but again, to some extent, it's just because it's so easy to go for it, again, due to the low CP cost in comparison with taking up. I mean, there's also timings to consider there. Timings. So, part of just suggestion of moving it up there, to be honest, at this point. Though, that is a thought I had for some time. Otherwise, again, it would basically sort of make, you know, make medium armor cheaper or sort of more easy to access for all sides. So again, that would cause a fresh crop of new problems. Panzer Gladiator Field could maybe do with a small buff. Stuki 
Still needs more armor. Stugi still needs a nerf to its speed, sort of reloading. Uber Commander Vesta still need, needs an overhaul. Folks, gonna they still need to be worth something. Needs more flexible infantry. Again, the problem is basically they have a core infantry which doesn't really function as core infantry, which basically causes a lot of the problem for the Uber Commander Vest. So that's rather an issue. Then the Yak Panzer still needs to be made into an assault gun because really, as the Yak Panzer just solely it's a tank destroyer, it's a bad idea again. It wasn't liked by the Germans back in the actual war. They preferred assault guns, so giving them a tank destroyer when they're strapped for resources makes absolutely zero sense still. Orbital Darden could do with a cost reduction. I mean, 400 manpower, then adding 60 munitions? No. It's too costly, and I'm basically seeing more fights from as a response to that. More panzers for this, basically everything else. And rarely Orbital Darden. So that's something there that needs a bit of a change as well. Americans. Still need a Chiba Bazooka, it's still too expensive. Mortar buffed, nice, but you know, still don't see really people using it because again, they're currently just going for rifle company. Mortar, I think, is nicer overall. The heavy barrels that the veterans want could maybe do with a small buff, maybe an extra bit of range because it's a bit silly you have to move up so close just to fire that. I know it's supposed to you know, be heavier rounds and all that, but you know, I don't know. Otherwise, something else needs to be done about it. I'm not entirely too sure there. Stuart could maybe do with a bit of health buff or maybe some other small improvement or maybe just be made a bit cheaper. It's a bit hard to say there with a the Stuart light tank but it does sort of fall into an awkward position. It's more expensive than a T-70 I believe but it doesn't quite cut it. I mean it's still good but I don't know. It's a bit short there. I feel for the Soviets as you see the 6 could still do with some kind of you know, buff to make it a bit more useful in some way, one or the other, damage buff, penetration buff, either of those two maybe, or just simply give its regular attack a bit of splash damage as well, they're nothing quite as good as the barrage for example. Another option, the Strafniki I'm saying to feel just made into assault troops with a submachine gun since that was what the penal troops were largely used for, the SVT-40 rifle, yeah, seems a bit yeah, iffy. Instead, shift the SVT-40s maybe over to the guardsmen or something there. That could be an idea. Just as a sort of thought there. Otherwise, not so much there in the Soviets either. I mean, there's not really a lot there to sort of else. Well, truly comment on. For the Ramblin again, Stug has already been there a bit, but Stug. Panzer gun ideas. Flame for a half tech could do with some kind of buff. Either just does more damage somehow, or it becomes cheaper and more accessible. Maybe both, actually, because currently there's not really too much reason in aiming for it and a part of me would like to see the half tank itself made a bit more durable or just does a bit more with his machine guns really so a few just quick thoughts there as well beyond that I don't really think there's so much else to come on it's a bit harder to say it's a bit hard to say in sort of overall it's not really something you want to add in some huge changes at the moment to a certain extent it's a bit too sort of uh, dangerous you could really cause some huge movements and then you sort of really make huge changes everywhere and that's something I'm not necessarily always in fear although sometimes will be again overcommon just needs an overhaul but I don't think that's going to so massively affect the others so there you go, that's rather it. Again, there are some changes. The metagame isn't completely stale, but again, they are basically some sort of larger movements at the moment with some minor variations. There's potential for change if people sort of just realize, again, for example, the usefulness of MD42s and sort of some other bits and just sort of really try to be a bit more bold in exploring out different paths in the game. But there you go. Hopefully, though, this state of the balance giving you a bit of a clarity on things, maybe some ideas for your own games. Again, you know. Understanding the metagame can also understand you, give you an idea sort of how to deal with it, play around it, overcome it. I mean, the metagame in that regard should not be seen as the best way to play, by the way. It should be seen as how people perceive it to be. And that's the key difference. If you understand how people perceive something, you can then use their perception against them. So that's also a little trick there. The game is just as much about perception as just is about using the right units for some people. Again, perception matters. So there you go again, hopefully better, stronger understanding of the game. Hopefully it might give you a few ideas for your own matches and so on, so maybe some new tactics or strategies. If you did, you know, feel free to follow and subscribe here. As always, and of course, share it with your friends and family. Maybe enemies, maybe not. Anyways, thank you for watching and see you another time. Bye.